figures. I have a doctor's appointment today and I've already made arrangements for medical transportation and I'm going to this doctor's appointment. It's supposed to rain all day but I'm going. Um, I am going to pick up, uh, I take orthotic shoes uh, to help me walk and I have been waiting a year for these shoes. I don't know if it's because of where they're made or the supply chain being disrupted or what. But uh, I canceled all my other doctor's appointments because I refused to go to them in house slippers. Okay, I can't just walk into a, a, a store and buy a pair of shoes. Not even flip-flops. I'm lucky if I can find me some house slippers that will fit me. And I refuse to go to my doctor's appointments wearing house slippers. And I, ha I had a nurse tell me, Honey, people go to Walmart in the house slippers. Well, you know what? That's them. That ain't me. Back in my day, you didn't go no place in your house slippers. And you didn't go no place if your hair was up in curlers. So I canceled all them other appointments till I got my shoes. They're in. My feet are messed up because of the RA. Uh... First thing it did was go to my feet. Uh, my toes spent six months slowly dislocating themselves. Uh, and I had to learn how to walk all over again. And don't think that wasn't painful. Because it was. So today I'm going. Hell of high water. I'm going to go get my shoes. Now, I can't afford to buy these things. You can go and uh, get them, but they could be almost $200. That's a lot of money for a pair of shoes, right? So, uh, I get mine through uh, Medicaid, and, it, and that takes forever, too. So, I am going to get my shoes today. Having said that, uh, I rattled some cages last night. I uh, didn't name any names, but I addressed some friends that will, and I consider them friends, uh, that will uh, post videos that they're having medical problems, they'll tell you what they are, uh, they're going to the doctor, and uh, but they won't tell you if they're alright or not. That bothers me to no end. But no stress there, okay? Uh, but when you care about somebody, you want to know if they're alright or not, alright? Uh, Partially because of the way I was raised. Uh, if your neighbors were sick, you went over and took care of them. All right? Uh, in Indiana, when my mother was a girl, uh, they come and got my grandmother. Uh, a neighbor, now, uh, not neighbor like you know it today, okay? Uh, probably lived a good mile from them. Uh, come and got my grandmother. Uh, their neighbor had gone out uh, foraging and got a hold of the wrong mushrooms and the whole household was down sick and my grandmother went up there and she she nursed them all nursed them all they're lucky they survived that be careful what you eat all right when you go foraging a lot of those plants look alike a lot of people go um foraging for morel mushrooms now, there's a, a mushroom that looks like a morel, and I believe it's in that same family, okay? And years ago, it was put out as being okay to eat. Why? Because it wasn't poisonous. But the fact of the matter is, it's highly toxic and can and will make you sick. So when you go out foraging, you know, even the pictures in the books all kind of sort of like you're looking at them, they, they, they all kind of sort of look the same. Uh, it's very iffy. Anyway, going down a rabbit hole there. But I have friends uh, that will get online and they're having medical issues. They're going to a doctor, they'll tell you what the medical issues are, but they won't tell you if they're all right. Well, you know, uh, having worked in nursing and caring about people, the first thing you want to do is like, help in any way you possibly can. All right? And, and so I'm that kind of person. Not everybody is that kind of person. 
a, a lot of your people that work in the health fields and stuff like that, they are that kind of person. They are a people person. They care about people. And it, it bothers me to no end. And stresses me out even. Because I care. That they're going to the doctor. They'll tell you their medical issues again. But when they go to the doctor and come back, they, they won't tell you if they're all right. All right? So uh, I rattled some cages last night. Uh, and I got a pluffer of Texas. Okay, uh, I have a friend that watches my channel, and they're not just an online friend. Uh, I have physically known this person for years and, and have met them, all right, several times on several occasions. And they uh, had to sit me down. They are involved in a narcissistic relationship, all right. And I've gotten to the point where I don't want to hear it no more. It, to me, it's just drama. Uh, at this point, they're putting themselves in that situation. They're keeping themselves in that situation. Now, I know a narcissistic relationship when I see one now, all right? But when I was 18, I married it into it, and I didn't have a clue what it was. And everything this person is telling me Describes a narcissistic relationship. The love bombing, the ghosting, uh, the revolving door relationship. If you don't know what a revolving door relationship is, it's when you sit down to talk to somebody to resolve an issue, and you think it's you, you've come to a you know a, an agreement, and the issue is resolved. Uh, they turn around and do it again. All right. Uh. uh in a healthy relationship, a couple finds out what each other likes so they can please each other. In a narcissistic relationship, the narcissist will find out what you like so they can use it to love bomb you. Tell you what you want to hear. Love on you a little bit. And it all comes down to getting what they want. Once they got what they want, they ghost you. All right. Uh, here recently, uh, the narcissist wanted something, and it, they couldn't. They couldn't. Uh, the other person couldn't deliver. They just couldn't. Narcissist got so mad that they they didn't even so much as send them a text on their birthday, wishing them happy birthday. All right. Now, now this is somebody that's been there for them financially to help them do things that they they you know, they needed help with, and this has been going on for over a year now. But the narcissist won't commit. A lot of them won't. Sometimes they will. Sometimes they won't. And, and ghosting them on their birthday, not even so much as sending them a text, was their way of punishing them because the other person couldn't deliver what they wanted when they wanted it. A narcissist finds out what their partner likes, what they like to hear, what they like to have, uh, just, to, just to get them there long enough, love bomb them with that long enough to get what they want, and then they, you may not see that person for two or three days, a week, or you, uh, hear from them at all. All right? <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, and I, I keep telling this person, you need to get out of that relationship. Now, it, it, does this sound like drama? It sure as the hell is. Now, I was married to a narcissist. Uh, I didn't even know what a narcissist was. And every time I thought we had an issue resolved and peace was restored, it wasn't a couple, three weeks before they were doing it again. Nothing, nothing ever gets resolved with a narcissist. Nothing. That's what a revolving relationship is. A revolving door relationship. They tell you what they know you want to hear at the time. Just to shut you up. And then when the opportunity presents itself and they want to do what they want... Uh, 
that agreement that you have made to keep the peace and all that time and effort you put into creating peace uh, goes to hell in a handbasket. They're going to do what they want. And this person has been involved in that relationship for over a year, wasting their time and resources on that person. Now, uh, my bluntness makes me very unpopular. But sometimes when you tell people the truth, uh, they'll get pissed off at you. Uh, initially, I sugarcoat things. Well, you know, gee, that don't sound good. You know, um, maybe you should, you know, no, I don't think that's right. Uh, maybe you should, like, cut ties with that person, you know. But after a while, you get tired of hearing it. Right? Uh, you can sugarcoat a turd, but it's still a turd. Let that resonate. Uh, so uh, I got tired of hearing it, and the, th this person watches my videos. I didn't name no names, but I, I made it quite clear what was going on and how I felt about it in a more clear and direct way. And I was hit with a pluffra of texts about how I was this, that, and the other thing, and uh, I'm not uh, going to mention everything they said, but and then they went into defending uh, that person which was very offensive to me because I ain't never done nothing to them like that person has done to them, all right? It was very offensive when they were defending the narcissist. What can you do? I know what a narcissist is. I was married to one. Like I said, I, I did not know what a narcissist was. Uh, now there's more uh, information out there. I highly suggest, if you're watching this video and you know who you are, that you get on YouTube and find out uh, some of the characteristics of a narcissist. You're going to see that what I'm telling you is true. The love bombing, the revolving door, the ghosting. You are being manipulated by a narcissist. And, and, and that situation will change you because that's not who you are. Uh, I got out of this situation. Once, once I got counsel and find, found out what I was dealing with, I realized it was no good for me. It was definitely no good for my kids. And I did what I had to do. I packed up everything and I moved to another state. That was not easy. Did it hurt to leave that relationship? It sure did. Did I survive it? Yeah. Do I wish I had done it sooner? Hell yeah. You need to detach from that situation. And get away from it. And the longer you're away from it, the more you're going to ask yourself, why did I stay in that mess so long? It will affect you. It will affect who you are, your character. Uh, I had become uh, a direct result of all the things that that narcissist had done to me. I had an identity crisis. I was always a caring, giving, loving person. Uh, that person would get pissed off at me if I gave somebody out on the street two dollars. If I gave away old baby clothes to a woman that was pregnant and, and on welfare. All right. It was not me. By the time I got away from them, it was not me. I had to recover myself. They'll begin trying to mold and shape you. They will turn you against uh, people you care about. They'll try to isolate you.
keep you away from other people in any way they can. It just gets worse and worse. It really does. But I did what I had to do. I packed up everything and I forcefully moved myself out of that situation. And I began the healing process on me. There is, uh, in a revol revolving door relationship, there's no issues that are ever solved. Unresolved issues create baggage. A person like that eventually will cut you loose for somebody else. And then you're going to be walking away with all that baggage. A narcissist will, will reach a point where they don't want you, but they don't want nobody else to have you either. So they're going to try to create a person that nobody would want. You got baggage. Now, I've made this statement before. I've been alone for six years by choice. I have dated a couple times. And uh, whenever there seemed to be an issue come up, and I tried to talk to them, and it wasn't going to happen. It was going south. I got out of it. Life is too short to invest all that time and energy and all your resources in somebody that you can't work out a relationship with. Especially a narcissist. Because it all comes back to them. It all comes back to them. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I pissed somebody off last night. I'm sure that, that I'm going to be getting some texts today. Um, but in, in all reality, they need to get out of that relationship. Do not bring that back here, okay? Because what happens is uh, uh, they take you down that, uh, that rabbit hole with them. Uh, they take you on that emotional roller coaster ride with them. Uh, initially seeking help from friends, uh, somebody to talk to is a good thing if, if you're coming up with a game plan to get out of it. I want to be there for a friend. But I don't want to be the soft spot they hit uh, and bounce off to go back to it. And I got tired of it. Uh, going around talking about your problems to your friends never resolved anything uh, uh, when, in your relationship. And this stuff's been going on for over a year now. That person wants you when they want something. Uh, and when they don't, you don't hear from them. Uh, if you don't give them what they want, they don't even text you, happy birthday. Uh, I, I can see that you're hurt. As your friend, I hate to see that. But what I hate most is seeing you go back to it over and over and over and over again. And I am not going to cushion the blow anymore so that you can go back to that crap. I love you dearly. But you need to learn to love yourself. You need to do what it takes to love yourself. That person treating you that way and you're letting them is creating issues in you that you don't even realize how much they're changing you. And then what? You might take that into another relationship. If I have a relationship again, it's going to be with somebody that we sit down and we talk. We resolve issues. Their word is their bond. We trust one another. You need to protect the peace in your relationship. If you fight for anything in a relationship, fight to keep the peace and be loyal and faithful to each other. Especially if there's children involved. I want somebody I can, we enjoy each other's company. We're there for one another. We understand one another. We don't keep secrets from one another. We don't lie to one another. 
If I can't have that kind of relationship, I don't want one. Uh, there, are, there are times, there, there, there'll come a time in your life when you realize you're better off being alone than with the wrong person. You really are. So I'm sure I'm going to get all kinds of texts today. Because I got them last night, I'll tell you. Uh, they had nothing nice to say about me. And somebody that viewed one of my videos uh, thought it was funny. Oh, you offending somebody? Oh, no, you would never do that. Well, I'm sorry. Sometimes, you know, uh, the truth is offensive. It don't mean to be. But if it hits home on something that you're doing that ain't right... It could come across that way. There's a thing called tough love. It can make you very unpopular. To anybody out there that's in a relationship that even remotely sounds like the one I just described, you need to do your homework. You need to begin watching that situation more closely, trying to view it from the outside looking in. If I could get a hold of the collar of my friend's shirt and yank them out of that situation to where they'll see it from a different perspective, from the outside looking in, they might think that's, they were crazy. All right? They might look at it differently. But you can't make somebody do something. And I'm not about to try. Anybody out there that you, you'll get love bombed. Then you'll get ghosted. You don't hear from that person for a while. If they want something, they don't get their way. Uh, they ghost you again. Uh, you got that revolving, uh, uh, revolving door relationship going on. And it all seems to really come, when you think about it, it all really comes back down to them and what they want. You need to get out of that relationship. You really do. So, yeah, uh, going on, uh, 23, 24 minutes here. Well, yeah, I'm going to get some texts today. <laughs> um, sorry about that, but it is what it is. I'm tired of hearing it. Don't bring it to my door no more. I don't want to get on that emotional roller coaster with you and your little uh, merry-go-round of misery. And, and to my friends that uh, are visiting doctors and stuff like that and... Uh, let, let somebody know you're all right, okay? Uh, I think social media has changed the definition of caring about somebody. You can say you care about, oh, I hope, you know, you're all right and everything's going to be all right. But, you know, uh, if you physically want to be there to, to help them, you want to know that they're okay, is everything okay? I mean, I guess, you know, what, crossing some line, you know? Uh and I think, again, I think social media has something to do with that. That caring for somebody, uh, it has taken on a whole new definition because of social media. And I think it's, it's empty. It's empty. It really is. And if you've ever worked in the health field, I think you know what I'm talking about. Because caring for somebody is actually being there for them. And I'm sure I pissed off a few people with that uh, last night because I touched on that issue. Uh, don't do that to me, okay? Let me know you're all right. Uh, you put it out there. Don't act like I'm being nosy now just because I want to know you're all right. <sighs> yeah, so um, I know I'm going to get a bunch of texts today, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not even going to tell you some of the things that were said to me in text last night. Um, but it's the truth. They need to get out of that 
and get away from it. And I'm only telling you that because I love you. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.